Infrastructure, the topic you didn't know you wanted to know so much more about. But this is AP Human Geography, baby, so you're gonna have to find a smooth place in your brain to stick this in. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, let's get to it. So before I tell you why infrastructure is so important to urban development, let's define this thing. So infrastructure refers to all the systems and structures that support populations in a place, including roads, bridges, power stations, power lines, water supply systems, internet access, etc. But often other services are included under the heading of infrastructure as well, things like hospitals, and schools and police and fire departments, etc. In other words, infrastructure is just a big hairy word that refers to all the amenities in a city that make people's lives there possible. Like if you live in a city and the roads are so bad that movie crews use it as a location to film a post-apocalyptic thriller, well, you know, it's gonna make it kind of hard to get to work. Or if a city's drinking water is coming from a polluted river and that nasty water is leaching lead out of the pipes and that filthiness is coming out of people's taps and making them sick, well, you know, that's not a great place to live. And by the way, that's not an example I made up. That that actually happened in Flint, Michigan in 2014, and they are still dealing with a disastrous infrastructure decisions today. So all in all, infrastructure includes everything that creates the occasion for an urban society to flourish. Oh, and by the way, if you want note guys to follow along with this video and all my videos, then check the link in the description. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is this, the infrastructure of a city determines to a significant degree the quality of life for that city's residents. It's pretty simple. If the infrastructure is good, their quality of life will improve, but if it's bad, their quality of life will decline. So that further means that the quality and location of a city's infrastructure directly impacts the spatial patterns of economic and social development. In other words, infrastructure plays a big role in how cities are arranged and how they develop. And I hope this doesn't surprise you by now, but there is a big difference between infrastructure in core urban areas versus periphery and semi-periphery urban areas. And let me explain that up real nice for you. So what makes a core country a core country? Well, you know, there's a lot of things, but the granddaddy of them all is wealth. Like on the global stage, core countries are so rich that as we say here in the South, they buy a new boat every time the old one gets wet. And that's important to remember when it comes to differences in infrastructure because roads and power grids and hospitals cost a lot of money. And more money, all things being equal, usually means better infrastructure in an urban area. And better infrastructure in turn creates more opportunities for economic flourishing throughout the world. So it's kind of like a self-perpetuating cycle. Like the wealthier a city is, the better their infrastructure will be. And that will attract businesses to set up shop there and provide more jobs and therefore more wealth. For example, several years ago, Amazon.com opened a massive fulfillment center in Atlanta which created thousands of jobs. However, they never would have done that if Atlanta didn't have a system of robust highways and a thriving international airport and abundant access to the internet, etc. And in general, Amazon has a metric buttload of fulfillment centers in core countries, but if you look at a map, there's only a couple on the entire continent of Africa. So does Amazon just hate Africa? Well, you know, not that I know of, but when they're going to invest a bunch of money to build a fulfillment center, they have to do it in a place that has enough quality infrastructure to support their services. And apparently, they've decided that most of the cities in sub-Saharan Africa don't meet those standards. And that leads me to my next point, namely that many peripheral and semi-peripheral countries often lack the money to improve their infrastructure, and that makes it very difficult to improve their standards of living. For example, see previous point about the straight up dearth of Amazon fulfillment centers in Africa. Again, it's a self-perpetuating cycle. In peripheral countries, urban governments don't have a lot of tax revenue to work with because their populations don't make a lot of money. And without tax revenue, they can't exactly fix up the roads and install better internet. And without those amenities, Amazon ain't never gonna build a fulfillment center there, which would create jobs and improve people's standards of living. And like if they did get more jobs, the government would have more tax revenue, which could then be used to improve infrastructure, which would attract more businesses. But they don't have it, so you begin to see the problem. Or another example, in several large cities in India, public transportation is available, but since municipal governments lack the funds to provide adequate security on buses and trains, it can discourage people from working because they fear for their safety while getting to and from work. And if enough people don't feel safe going to work, then that's gonna be a real economic problem that ultimately has a direct impact on the development of the city. But here's where I tell you that differences in the quality of infrastructure can occur within the same city as well. It's not as though every part of Atlanta has great infrastructure. And it's not as though every part of Lagos, Nigeria is in disrepair. No, in every city there are variations on the theme of infrastructure. Philadelphia, for example, has a population characterized by an extreme gap between the wealthy and the poor. In the wealthy part of the city, roads are safe and repaired while the roads in the poorer sections are often deteriorating. And therefore, one part of that city is going to flourish socially and economically while the other part is not. And if you don't know which is which by now, like, <laughs> I got no more words to explain it. So ultimately, this is a question of scale. What might be true of infrastructure at an urban scale might not be true at the scale of neighborhoods, so to speak. So I'll just say the same thing again. The quality of a city's infrastructure has a direct impact on the social and economic well-being of its residents. Okay, click here to keep reviewing other Unit 6 topics, and you can click here to grab all my video note guides, which will help you get all the contents of this course firmly crammed into your brain folds. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop. I'm Lerout.